Welcome back. I'm MTG Joe, and today we're going to be starting up some M20 budget build series, and we're going to kick it off with elementals. So we're going to start off with a red, red, uh, a red green. Sorry about that. Early morning. Uh, red green elementals list, and we'll slowly build into teamer elementals, which seems to be one of the most popular decks come out of M20 so far. It's the deck I'm playing in ranked right now. I'm 6-0 with my variation, and I've been having a ton of fun with it. There's a lot of powerful synergies that go on there. Um, so with a lot of these decks, we'll start with the two-color version and then eventually build to three-color. Um, so this particular list here is all in commons or commons, with exception of the free cards that you get. So in this case, we get Rekindling Phoenix free from one of the earlier starter decks and then the, the dual lands. So we're going to be playing Rootbound Craig and Stomping Ground in our list. Um, that's just, especially with the Negro list, to be uh, consistent in terms of the mana. Um, so what I'll do is I'll play through a couple best of three matches and a couple best of ones, so that way you get the variation of both. And per the recommendation of some of the users, they wanted to see a bit more competitive play out of some of these decks. So what I'll do is for the ultra budget, the I will just play in the normal free, like, the normal unranked queues, and then with the mid-budget and then unbudget or non-budget versions, I'll play in ranked, so you can actually get a feel for how those work for those particular lists. Um, so to go through the deck itself, um, we're playing around elementals. So a lot of the payoff cards, unfortunately, are uh, with Splashing Blue. You have Risen Reef, you have Omnath, uh, stuff of that nature. Um, so those usually will be your payoff cards. Um, so with this red-green version, we're going to be a little bit lower to the ground, playing a little bit more aggressive. Um, so the deck itself will have a couple one-drops in Scorch Spitter. So when it attacks, it deals one damage to target player or Planeswalker. So it could kind of do some ping damage, pick off some stuff. Uh, we have Healer of the Glade, which can help win the races, gains us some life. And the two toughness is relevant against um, Chain Whirlers if we encounter it. Um, we have a full burn package of Lightning Strike and Shock, uh, either as aggressive or to get rid of blockers. Um, I'm playing a ramp package consisting of Chandra's Ember Cat, a three of, and two Leafkin Druids. Um, so this particular version here, I'm not playing the full suite of four Leafkin, because we don't really have too much we want to ramp into in this particular build. And I like the, because we're more aggressive, I want to have some power. Um, so this is, uh, I play a four of in my uh, like rank deck. Um, but the ramp is more relevant there when we're going up to six mana Chandra. Uh, so something I want to try out is the Spelt Lord Ingus. Um, basically, you can sacrifice it to uh, act a treason an opponent for three or less. Uh, so it could be good to get rid of blockers. We'll try it out, see how it works out. Uh, Lightning Mare uh, can be relevant um, against blue decks. We'll see how many that come into it. Um, and it can just be pumped up. Uh, so really the engine in this particular build is Creeping Trailblazer. It gives our other elementals plus one O, and it uh, can get in a pump itself based on elementals. Um, I'm trying a sweet package, and the top end will be probably be something we tweak. Uh, I just want to see how certain cards work. Uh, Zhang Zhang, Zhang Zhanggu uh, puts counters on our creatures, um, so it could just kind of increase the power of them. Uh, we don't really have an anthem necessarily like you would with like vampires or some of the other effects. Uh, scampering Scorcher, uh, when it enters the battlefield, you create two 1 1 elementals. So, this is basically a budget substitute for the three mana Chandra, which, if you haven't played, is really, really good, especially against like control decks. It just keeps putting on pressure. Uh, the Rekindling Phoenix, like I said, we're playing it. It's a free card you get. The reason being is. The egg is an elemental, um, so not as much in this particular build, but when you are playing with the blue, uh, it does tr uh, trigger Risen Reef, uh, which is relevant. Uh, you get the, the effect off that. But really, because we are an aggressive red-green deck, uh, Rekindling Phoenix is harder to kill for them. Um, I, playing the uncommon Chandra, um, so this can give our elementals more power, ramp us, or deal two damage. Um, I'm playing around with these three Planeswalkers to see which ones we want. Um, may also want the Samut for haste. Uh, Angrath is relevant for the Menace, and the Amass could just create some more tokens. 
Um, so for the sideboard, we have Fry, which is good against any of the blue-white control decks. Um, can deal with pretty much a lot of the creatures in the format right now. Gets rid of Alira. Um, pretty much anything that we need in blue or white, it can get rid of. Lava Coil is just our go-to answer for most of the creatures in the format. Uh, Tybalt against White Weenie is good, against Mono Red is good, against any of the Explore Package deck is good. Uh, Thrashing Brontodon, if we get into any Nexus or Enchantment based decks. Also against Aggressive decks, it's a good body. And Vine Mare, it's an Elemental, which is nice. Um, and this is more for the targeted removal decks, like your Grixis or something like that. Have a really hard time getting rid of this. Um, so we'll run it through, um, and we'll see how it goes. Uh, da -da -da -da, traditional play. All right. So as we get started, if you're new to the channel, um, we do these build series. We play a bunch of budget decks. Uh, everything I do in terms of budget, that I do do write-ups on the Arena subreddit. So you can catch the detail stuff there. If you have any questions, feel free to drop by the Arena subreddit or drop in the comment here. And if you haven't done so already, if you can hit that subscribe button on YouTube, it's free, it's easy, and it goes a long way to helping me build the channel further. Um, and that's my pandering for now. Um, so this hand, we're a little heavy on lands, but we'll probably try it out. So these decks, even with my like uh, non-budget deck, it's base green. Um, okay, so this is Grixis. I'm going to lead off with the Vine Mare in case they have um, the... Two mana. Okay, so they have cast down the two mat tyrant scorn. Uh, okay, so, so they have war boss. I'm gonna go ahead and shock that. So this is the Grixis mid range deck. So we went with Trailblazer here because as the two toughness, this being Grixis. Um, here, I think we take a hit and just build out our board. We'll play the Rekindling Phoenix next turn. So the reason I put the, to the counter on here is this is an Anthem, so they're more incentivized to kill this, so then it leaves it as a relevant body afterwards. Ah, punished for not playing the Phoenix there, so we're probably dead this one. So they actually forget to play Narset, which is relevant. Um, so we're just going to attack our opponent. They're going to have card advantage with Kefnet anyways. We need, we need to try to get them dead. We are playing into like a Ritual of Soot, but... We don't really have an option there. Let's see what they hit with Narset. Okay, so they hit the Devil. Okay, they have Shock. Um. I think we're kind of stuck here because like we could just poke our things in but we're not really gaining an advantage. I'm just going to bring Narset down so it doesn't get a card draw. Kefnet's really rough for us. Alright, so we probably lost this one. So 
So they have two blocks they can do here. Block here, block there. Okay, so I'm gonna concede this one. Grixis match one is gonna be hard for us. So I'm bringing in the Vine Mares. I'm gonna bring in the Fries. Um, lava Coils we could probably do without. Um, so this Smelt Ingus, not that good. Uh, top end. So that creates multiple bodies, which is relevant. Leaf Kindred is not going to be good in this matchup. Do I want Tybalt? This is probably also not good because they're going to bring in targeted removal. Uh, they have a lot of ways. Yeah, Lightning Mare isn't going to do much here. Especially if they have like the goblins. So they'll probably bring in Cryocarnarium in this matchup, which is going to be a little unfortunate. Or Ritualist it. Um, I'm going to mulligan this. Okay, we'll keep this one. I'm going to put the Angrath back. So if you haven't realized yet, we are playing with London Mulligan now uh, as of M20. So instead of just drawing six cards, you draw seven and put one back. So it's a pretty good curve. Would have liked something a little bit better on two. But the Vine Mare will survive Ritual. At the very least, if they kill it, it deals one damage. Okay, that's fine. That indicates to me they don't have a Cryocarnarium in hand. Otherwise, taking the extra point of damage isn't that bad. So we're in a pretty good spot right now, I think. So I'm not going to offer the trade yet. So we were trying to catch them. If they blocked one of these, we ping it and then lightning strike it. Uh, we could have gotten a couple extra points of damage, but then not hold up the lightning strike. So Ritual there is a little, a little unlucky. Um, I think we just do this. So the reason we're doing this is because we could attack with this at least. Memorial. Okay, so now I'm probably more inclined in doing the trade. If they want to trade the Vine Mare. So they'll put that on the top. So we have a couple turns. Oh. 
that's fine. If they're wasting cast down on stuff like that. So here I'm just going to get this out of the way. They will get the card draw, but we can take out Ugin. So Vinemare has been really good. I played in the side of my uh, rank deck as well. So these are guaranteed unless they've cry two damage. Okay, so they got the Kefnet back. Gonna try to bait them. Just hold at this point, make it seem like we have more in hand. Okay, so we'll flip search for Escanta. Uh. Ugin is scary. Or uh, Nicol Bolas. Just go to the face here. So at this point, I'm just going to smash in. It clears the blockers. If they uptick with Nickel Bolas, we'll just get rid of Tybalt. Fry also gets rid of Nickel Bolas the turn it comes down in pluses, which is relevant as well. They can, if they see the line, uh, we should have probably got rid of this last turn because they can make an elemental here. So probably digging for like ritual assert. It's fine if they want to Angrath's Rampage here. We'll just sack the Tybalt. So we're doing that. So I think we got them because they can't kill this otherwise they die. Just end the turn. So they're in a tricky spot. So it's Cryer Cranarium or Bust for them. Or God Eternals. That's probably the game. They got it. We can't beat that. We milled the other Tybalt's. They can block with their Nicol Bolas and just shoot down our creatures. Well, that one kind of sucked. We are quite close. Run it back for another one. So we'll get, continue and do these build series for a bunch of different colors. I think next I'll do blue-white flyers. Um, but let me know what you'd like to see. Uh, we'll keep the seven here. If there's any archetypes in particular. 
I'm probably also going to be doing like a, a draft guide, how to kind of draft um, like the archetypes in M20. And then we'll do some drafts once that comes up as well, more of an instructional video. So stay tuned for that. Opponent's thinking. Okay, so we don't need to shock here. So this effectively kind of attacks for two. So next turn we could drop down the Scampering Scorcher. Or kill that on the spot. And then we'll hold up the shock in case they have something else. With the Arcanist, you don't really want it to gain value. They have a lot of pump effects if this is Naya Feather. So we're going to make them pay, basically, to have a Danto block. That's good, so we don't have to shock ourselves. Oh no, no, you're supposed to tap. Crap. So interesting they take the block. They're taking four damage instead of the one. Oh, they just trade. It's beneficial for us for sure. Okay, so they have the second Adanto. So we'll attack in again. Just gain some life. And turn nice thing is this can attack into defending a Danto without trading. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, Sky One, whenever you cast a spell that targets a creature you control. Interesting. So we're just going to keep smashing in. Getting this off the board proved to be relevant. So we're doing this to force him to pay for life. The protection isn't as relevant now, so they effectively took four damage to save one life. Okay, so they're digging here. So Trailblazer can get us there. Chandra or Shock. 
Why overthink things? That's why I like the burn package in this deck. It just gives you a lot of reach. Alright, so against this deck... Fryzer... Uh... Maybe not Fry. Play Lava Coil since it gets everything. I like the Tybalt. And I like the Vine Mares. Chandra's probably not that good. The Druids seem lackluster in this particular build. This can steal their stuff, which isn't too bad. Seven cuts, the Root Life gain's relevant. Lightning Mare also seems bad. Shangju, three more cuts. Uh, probably cut our curve down a bit. Actually, don't mind those. Get rid of the Ember Cats instead. Just a ton of removal. Against Feather decks, what you really want to do is just kill their stuff. If they don't have creatures, they have a bunch of pump spells that don't do anything, and they can't really get any value out of it. Alright. like this hand a lot. Scorch Spitter. Ooh, Trailblazer is good too. So they're likely bringing in like Lava Coils or some more burn to deal with our stuff. Okay, so they have a Danto here. Lava Coil's not as good. But we're just going to start throwing our creatures at him. What are they thinking about? You want to pay for life? So like this, they basically have to take 5 damage to trade with this and keep their Adanto alive. This could be relevant uh, later in the game to steal one of their things. And that is kind of bad for us. So they missed a land drop. Question is, do we want to steal their Danto? I think it kind of depends what they play. Angrath might be the better play since if they don't have another creature, the menace becomes relevant. Pretty aggressive. Ah. Uh, still think I'm okay with that. They paid a lot there. So, really need something other than lions. No blocks here. Oy. Well, we're dead to a pump spell. Make them pay the life here. Yep. 
we drew one spell in all lands after that, so can't really chalk that up. Um, I think I want the Brontodons in. And... Cut a Smelt Ward. Cut a Scamper. Run it back like that. The four toughness will be relevant if they're bringing in a lot more like Domri's ambush and the stuff. A uh, little awkward, but we'll keep. Would have liked a forest to start. His opponent is playing slow. Pretend like we have a shock. They usually don't play much on one anyways. This can attack until on a Danto. See what they come down with. Okay, so that's good. We can lava coil that. The life gain off healer the glade can be relevant in this matchup too. So green source would be really good here. No blocks. So I'm doing this now. Okay, so they do have the gods willing. It's a bit unfortunate. The reason we did it is... Mind you, a lot of it is just one mana spells anyways. Okay, Lava Coil is a great pick up there. Let's us attack in with everything. If we draw land, we can pump this up. This also threatens just to steal their blocker. So I'm just going to play this out. We're going to steal one of their things next turn. Just pass the turn. Haste. Ooh. You're three mana. So, how does this work? They block three things, at most, take three. We can steal their feather. So, we can steal their feather. That's three in the air, and. Two on the ground is five. Okay, so we'll just go Vine Mare. Okay. 
Best case would be to draw land, then we can trailblazer and steal their feather. Them blowing a God's Willing here is actually pretty good for us, because that could have interrupted the gain control part of it. Oh, they get it back. Never mind. Uh, so we have to go wide. And they get Domri's ambush back. It seems wrong. Probably the Trailblazer would have been better to get rid of. This would gain five off the activation. Okay, so we can Lava Coil to force a God's Willing. Then they can't fight. And then play Trailblazer. Okay, so they block here, they block here, block here, they take three. Kills one of them. Um... They get back God's Willing. They're just gonna fight something. Let's try this out. We're in a pretty bad spot now that they can just cycle God's Willing. Domri's Ambush just keeps killing and then God's Willing. Close. So we're going to hold out because we still have enough burn in our deck. We also have the Tibble tokens. God's Willing's a nice card for this deck. Nah. It could poke through some damage. They're just gonna Domri's ambush. Yeah, we're dead. That one was definitely close. Might have been too conservative at the end there. Do that mastery tree. Uh, I'm gonna queue up a best of one. The dog hears me talking with the door closed and thinks people are in the, the room. Uh, pretty aggressive hand, I'll keep it. This could be a couple things, knights, vampires, esper, cause... Why have anything other than fun? Um, here we have a couple options. So this puts less power on the board. But guarantees we can play two things next turn. But not really because we're missing the red. So let's go Smelt Will Ward Ingus. If this is like the hero build, we have a shock. Okay, that's good for us. So 
So I'm gonna play out the Trailblazer. Absorb. Wow. We have not seen that in a while. I'm gonna just play this out and then pass the turn. Uh, the reason we're okay with this is because they can't Kai's Wrath us next turn. Just gonna play with the Leaf Can in case you draw another Trailblazer. And Absorb. This is an old Esper deck. Little Teferi is basically made Absorb useless. Okay, so that's Kai's Wrath probably. We held on to this because this is a good card after a Wrath to drop down. Could also be Big Teferi. See what they have. What you got? Okay, big to fairy. So they didn't do black. Here I want to force him to have a wrath. Even if they do, we could shock them and then drop down Scampering Scorcher. It's one power short of lethal. I don't think we win this game going long, so... If you play best of one, don't play this. Just play um, another Ember Cat or another Scampering Scorcher. Baby to fairy. A sure thing. I think we're in a pretty good spot. Like if they have absorb, then we're kind of screwed. I don't know if they're playing Settle the Wreckage. But again, like I don't think we're beating those. What you got? <laughs> got him. Beating those Teferi bros. Alright, so I'm going to wrap this up. We'll come back with the mid-budget version um, and then go to the non-budget. Uh, if you want a sneak peek, this is the version that I'm playing right now. Uh, spark doubling like the Chandra's feels really good. Um, but that's pretty much the deck. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below if you have any preference for what you'd like as the next budget build. And if you haven't done so already, if you can hit that subscribe button, it goes a long way to helping out the channel. Thanks for watching and have a great one.